Didn't what? What you wanted. Wait a minute. I'm getting confused here. Hey, tell me, Hart. You tell me. Did you ever question Roxy herself? Did you even bother to ask her if you were the father of her child? No, sir. No, no. What? If you became convinced that you were wrong, you'd be mad enough to admit it, wouldn't you? You'd even be willing to take her back if Roxy swore that you were the father of her child, which she does. She does? She does! So how would you describe yourself? I don't. <laughs> People say, I Richard wouldn't. Gere, or he's an actor, or he's, he's, a, or he's an activist, or he's a... I don't describe myself. It's not my job. <laughs> but are you optimistic that um, your dreams for the future... For I am more genuinely optimistic. Well, and maybe I'm naive, but I tend to be optimistic about everything. I think we're all going in the right direction. I think we all, all of us, have so much to learn and so many mistakes to make in the process. But what makes you think we're going in the, r the right direction? Well, I just feel it. I feel it. I feel it in myself. I feel it in the people around me. I... That I haven't sensed a delicate heart. Nobody. And that heart yearns for the best in all of us. It yearns for love and compassion and wisdom. And every time we settle for less than that, we're miserable. Maybe not in the moment, but it comes up sooner or later. That sense of settling, we settle for less. We settle for being less than we could be. And, and again, not in terms of money, not in terms of power, any of that thing. It's just in terms of literally love and compassion and wisdom. And is, is this how you want to go forward? I mean, what's next for you? Obviously, um, lots of... I'm very open to things, you know. I'm, uh, and that way I'm still like a child. I am quite spontaneous about things. Your dreams, the things that you want to see achieved. For myself, for the world, what? For yourself, for your family, for the world. My family, I'm very focused on my kid. And what would you like to see him grow up into? Whatever he wants to. You know, I, as long as his heart is moving in the direction of opening and his mind is moving in the direction of wisdom, well, however it expresses itself, I don't care. But that's the direction we're all on. You know, we take detours. You know, but we, all of us, eventually get back on a road that's moving towards love, compassion, and wisdom. There's no question about it. Will you see that in your lifetime, do you think? And whether more and more people will share your ideas, your values, and... Um, I don't know anyone who doesn't. You know, I, I can maybe articulate it because I have teachers who make a point of articulating it all the time. But I think if you start to... Um, People have strange ideas about meditation, I think. They think it's some kind of mystical experience that's someplace else. You kind of become someone else and you have this vision experience. In, and maybe that is true, but I haven't found it that way. I think meditation is really looking at your mind. Just watching your mind, slowing things down enough that you watch your mind. And you see the content of your mind. And through certain techniques and influences, the positive influences are around you everywhere. You can start to transform the qualities of your mind and get closer to its essential qualities, which are these expansive ones of really just love and, and wisdom. And I find that it's possible for almost anyone to drop the illusion, drop the spectacle of reality in sometimes in selective ways. You know, some, sometimes people have a drink. In the first couple of drinks, it's like there's a certain sense of dropping, you know, or there's a space between thoughts. When one thought has stopped, has, has finished, exhausted itself, and you before want to capture the next, that. but before the next one starts, there's a space, there's a gap. And in that gap is, is the nature of mind, is just simply whew, clarity and knowing. And then another thought arises out of that emptiness. You know, shunyata is very much what essential 
thing of what Buddhism is. Out of that emptiness, reality emerges again. The thought emerges. But with a little practice, you can, you can exist in both of those realms at the same time. I mean, someone like me, who's just a beginner, can't do that. But we see great sages, the Dalai Lama, other great teachers can, can accomplish this. But what do you feel when you, you know, grab onto the spaces between thoughts, the pauses? Well, that's pure bliss, because you are not existing in a desire realm anymore. It's not an ego realm of me. Every, every choice and every thought I have is about self-cherishing, about what I want, how I choose to make things around me. You know, it's like no matter how powerful in the world or not powerful, our minds are very similar in that we are very egocentric in this level of reality. And we are very much identifying with, with this idea of ego, of self. And these other layers of consciousness and the nature of mind itself, there is no sense of that. And it's vast and wide open and blissful and loving. Richard Gere's dream goes beyond himself and his family. It is a dream for the entire world, including Indonesia. And as such, his visit to this country is significant, not just because he is someone of great fame, but because he is someone who can remind us of the true values that we need to uphold as human beings. A message that Rio understands. What do you see as that sig significant? How I can it's, it's we... I think it's very significant. I think it's, it's you know, people, people need to see that, you know, with whatever resources you have, you, you know, you, you should try to do something which is useful for everybody. I think it's really important that you don't, uh, you, you know, that you, you, you also you don't discriminate. And you know, he's, he's, he, I think his mission in coming here is really, it's all embracing. I don't think he's interested in excluding anybody or saying, this, I don't want this person to come along. I, don't want, I mean, he's very much focused on this all-inclusive thing. And it's, you know, it's, it's realistic. What else is there to do? When we, when we have, when we create these negative ideas in our mind about others all the time and so forth, you know, it plays itself out. And eventually, when we have that attitude, nobody wins. Nobody wins. You might use military force, you might use you know, terrorism, you might, but nobody wins. It's just destructive. And we need, to see, we need to see, as Indonesians, I think we need to see that we have the capacity and the potential to resolve this and to, to move forward. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel that you're a much better person now, say, than you were 10, 20, 30 years ago? I would hope so. <laughs> and are you, do you feel that you're influencing people to think the same way or to move in the same direction or does it matter to you? I think people will all find their own paths. I'm certainly not a proselytizer. The Dalai Lama is not a proselytizer. He, he warns people to stay in their own religion that they grew up with. Very clear about that. And I think that all these different paths have emerged to enlightenment for a reason, because we are suited to one, they say, of 84,000 different routes to get there. And the reality is, as Krishnamurti said, there's as many religions as there are sentient beings. And that's the truth of it. But I think our personalities tend to take us to one path or another, or one kind of teaching to another. What's your job with it? You like it or not, <laughs> it's, you know, it makes you a very influential person, someone who could actually enact changes and affect a lot of people. If people not... want to interview me because I'm famous, I would rather talk about this stuff than about something that's totally frivolous. Yeah, of course. But will you continue doing this job? I like the job. It's a great job. You know, the, the, the way that I approach films is... Um, it's an adventure, it's a voyage of the mind and, and spirit and body, and I face things that I wouldn't ever face otherwise. I have forces inside of myself that come up in characters that otherwise I would not be aware of. But is that also the real you? They're all me. All of it's me. We, we all have infinite possibilities, you know, and an actor in many ways is... Uh, 
is an embodiment of that. An, an actor lives many different incarnations in one lifetime, many operas in one lifetime. <laughs> you know, and there's a great joy to that for, uh, if one sees it as a as a learning possibility, which I do. You know, and and, and uh, something I feel humility and sense of gratitude that I'm able to have this job and work this way. But why did you choose? Why not become a a monk or? I thought about it. What happened? Still might. I don't know. Everything's open. It's not over yet. <laughs> um, before I let you go. Yeah. Um, one message for Indonesian viewers. I mean, it's, it's great that you're here in Indonesia and I'm sure your presence is a very positive uh, impact and has a positive energy. What would you say? What kind of message would you like Well, to? it is interesting. You know, as I said, I haven't been here in, in close, maybe more than 25, but around 25 years. And I am a different person today. I think I was a bit of a boy then and I'm a married man with kids now and uh, my relationship with my teachers is um, much more mature than it was at that point. But I think probably I have a, a, a relationship that is being rekindled now with Indonesia and I think it may be good for me to spend more time here. And I think uh, maybe bringing a few things that, that the Dalai Lama has been teaching to bring that here can be of, of help to the Indonesians as well. How should we remember you, Richard Gere? Oh, I don't care. I don't really care. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, and it's great to have you, and I hope that we'll get to see you very soon in this part of the world. I hope so, too. I've really had a good time here. missing. Well, nothing else is going to fit into this dress, I'll yeah. tell you that. Maybe something in this box. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. <laughs> so, what have I learned from my meeting with Richard Gere? Well, we started, he certainly not someone who projects himself as the famous Hollywood actor that he is, or is even interested in talking about his acting career. Instead, he is someone who is genuinely warm, humble and down to earth and shows compassion for other people. He's someone with a mission, a message that he would like to share, which is that despite our differences, we're all one big human family sharing the same planet. And as such, we should be able to live in peace. And that's all for this episode. Don't forget to join me next month when we meet another figure who makes a difference to our lives here on Face to Face with Daisy Anwar, bringing you the world. I hope so too. I've really had a good time here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll see you. You stretch that to about 40 minutes, man. Very clever. I knew that would happen. Give them the old razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle them. Give them a show that's so splendid for us. Blow out.